Two and a half years ago, my mother, very unexpectedly, died. Later at the wake, some of us decided to toast her memory, and so we collected together a few glasses of Harvey's Bristol Cream, drank them down, and then afterwards thought to ourselves, what the fuck is Sherry? Hello there everyone and welcome to John Drinks, the channel in which I, John, have a drink. Now then, this week is International Sherry, well, worldwide I think is the actual term they use, Sherry Week. And I was originally going to be doing a video in much more depth about what this stuff actually is. But the problem is, I've kind of made the project a bit too complicated for myself, so I didn't want the week to go by without touching on something. So we're just going to be focusing on Pheno. Specifically, this bottle of Fino. It's a Tesco finest one uh, by the Bodegas in Gonzalez Bias. And I'm going to quickly talk about sherry and a couple of misconceptions around sherry and why you should actually give the stuff a go. Now, a quick addendum. I am not going to say that it is an easy drinking wine because, frankly, that would be a lie. It is absolutely worth your attention and it is absolutely worth looking into, but don't expect to be able to knock it back mindlessly. It's it's not an easy drinking wine so much as it is a thinking wine in that respect, and it absolutely lives and breathes alongside foods. So if you're a cook or a culinarian of any kind and you want something that pairs quite nicely with salty or dairy or something along that kind of an ilk, then something like this might do you quite well. So first things first, what is sherry? At its heart, it's a wine. Specifically, it's a fortified wine with a very unusual process around it. Basically, what they do is they take a fairly standard wine made using usually Palomino grapes, although sometimes Pedro Jimenez and Moscatel, depending on which kind of variety they're trying to go for, this one will use Palomino because it's a drier variety. And what they do with this is they imagine basically a pyramid of barrels, if you will. And at the top is the youngest wine, at the bottom is the oldest wine. And as you go down, you end up blending younger wines with older wines to end up with this kind of insanely crazy complicated wine that goes really well with foods and cocktails and all this kind of stuff that isn't necessarily approachable, but you'll end up loving it anyway. Whew. Anyway, um, the thing with Fino and Manzanilla, I feel like I should mention them as well, it's, it's another t kind of super dry sherry that's made in a specific town within the sherry triangle. The thing with this is, it's aged in the barrel and it is fortified, which means it has um, a bit, sort of like a grain alcohol equivalent in grape uh, mixed in with it. So it brings the percentage of the wine up so it will keep. And what that also does is it means that over time, yeast develops at the top of the wine. Now, the yeast eats all the sugars in the wine, which means that this particular variety is insanely dry. If you're a fan of dry wines, Oh, hello. A common misconception, mainly because of the blue bottle that I mentioned earlier, is that all sherry is sickly sweet. Or in the case of the blue bottle, shit. It's not the case. Um, and in fact, you can get some absolutely phenomenal sherries for dirt cheap. I mean, this cost me, I think, a fiver for a half format bottle. And that sounds like quite a lot, but then you consider it's 15%, and this will have been aged for about seven years. Try thinking about the last time you managed to get a seven-year-old whiskey for five pounds. You can't. The colour of this is going to be a beautiful golden colour, and you're going to get yeasty, bready qualities off of this. There is more of an alcoholic twang compared to what you would normally get with a wine, but that's part of the charm of it as well, and that's why you want something that is going to stand up to this wine. Rich cheeses work quite well. I know some people that like to pair this with blue cheese, actually. I hate blue cheese, personally, so I've not tried it, but if it's your kind of a thing, you go for it. Uh, if you want to completely fuck with your senses as well, you could go with something that's rich and sweet, because this is... How I describe this is it's as if wine was made in space, because the layer of yeast that develops on top essentially creates 
essentially a vacuum, so that no oxygen can get in. And you can tell that because it doesn't colour. There's no oxidative qualities in the wine. It's a pure crystal golden kind of a colour. When it does start to oxidise, that's when you start getting Olorosas and stuff like that, but that's further along the sherry train. I don't know if this has been informative or not, but my battery's about to die, so I kind of want to wrap this up. In conclusion, drink some sherry. Seriously, like, give it a go. It's, it's one of the things that I feel passionately about, that people aren't drinking enough sherry, they don't try it enough. Try it in cocktails, try it with food, give it a go. Personal preference for myself, I'm a big fan of Olorosos, because I like walnuts and chestnuts and those kind of flavours. You get that once it oxidises a little bit. This, personally for me, is a bit green. But if you like those kind of grassy, light, bright notes in your wines, it's probably going to work for you. Sherry has such a vast stretch. It goes from the driest wines that you can imagine to some of the sweetest, sickly black wines that you can get your hands on and everything in between. So there really is something for everyone with it. That having been said, comment down below, have you actually tried some sherries before? Let me know what you thought of them. Were they absolute gasoline? Name and shame. And if you want any recommendations, I'll be quite happy to give some because again, not gonna lie, closet sherry geek. Well, not anymore. Yeah, I just came out as a sherry geek. Uh.